Before I get started, folks, I just want to do a very quick mention to my sponsor, SV Boney. Now, if you're not familiar who SV Boney are, well, they're a manufacturer of all things astronomical, basically. Uh, I've been dealing with SV Boney for years, way before my YouTube channel, and I can guarantee that what you get is quality equipment at such a reasonable, such value for money, basically. So do yourselves a favor. You will be doing my me a little small favor as well because any um, purchases that go from the link below i do get a small bit of uh, commission from that uh, but more importantly you will seriously folks be doing yourselves a favor and uh, saving yourself a little bit of money so please feel free and follow the link in the description below hello well, welcome back to the channel thank you so much for dropping by well, the Winter Triangle. Uh, you may say, well, Jay, it's March. Uh, we're almost coming up to uh, spring. Well, it is March at the time of recording this video. Uh, but the Winter Triangle is available between December up until March and right up to the end of March. So once I show you how to find it, um, it is still available between those months. So if you are watching this video uh, between December and March, uh, you're still going to have a chance to see in the Winter Triangle. Now, you may have heard of uh, its larger sibling, the Summer Triangle. I've certainly talked about the Summer Triangle quite a lot on this channel, but uh, not a lot of people know that we do have a little triangle um, of stars in the winter also. Now, when we get little patterns like this, we call them asterisms. And uh, usually it's a grouping of stars, maybe making up a shape, or uh, sometimes it's taken uh, like part of a constellation. Ursa Major or the plow part of Ursa Major or the saucepan, um, frying pan, it's, there's lots of names. I'm sure you're familiar with that uh, particular constellation. But of course, that is an asterism in itself uh, because the plow, as we know it, is just part of a bigger picture, which is uh, the Great Bear. So when you hear astronomers talk about asterisms, that's what it is. It's just a small grouping of stars. So how do we find the Winter Triangle? Well, this time of year, March time, you want to be looking south, southwest after dark, uh, quite low to the horizon, and you want to look for the first brilliant star, Sirius. Now, Sirius is unmistakable because it's that one that's multicolored. It's very bright and vibrant star, a beautiful looking star because it's not very often that we see color in our hobby. Uh, to, so to see those uh, flashing reds and blues that you see coming from Sirius. Now, of course, this is just an optical illusion, as so to speak. It's just purely because Sirius is such a bright star and it's always quite low to the horizon. And it's just uh, atmospheric turbulence that um, gives it this illusion that we're seeing this light show effect. Now, Sirius is in the constellation of Canis Major, the large dog. So if we move just up from Canis Major, we come to its smaller partner, uh, Canis Minor, which is the small dog. And it's the star uh, Procyon that we want to be looking for. It's just the next one up from Sirius. Uh, it's pretty much unmistakable. Like I say, these three stars are quite a dominant triangle once you get your bearings. Now, once you've identified Procyon, moving across to the other famous star, which is Betelgeuse in the large constellation of Orion the Hunter, which again, I'm sure you're all familiar with Orion by now. It's the famous constellation with the three lines that, uh, the three, three stars, sorry, that represent the belt of Orion. And those three stars are what makes up the Winter Triangle. Now, I do encourage you, especially if you're a beginner, to go out and find these asterisms, such as the Summer Triangle later on in the year. You can find that one as well, because it does a number of things to uh, enhance your astronomy skills, if you like, when you're first starting out. Because I always recommend that uh, when you first start, whether you're getting uh, a fancy go-to telescope or not, is to learn your way around the night sky by learning the constellations. Now, you don't have to learn learn every single one. Uh, but just learning a few, my target that I always recommend to people is learn a new constellation every time it's a clear night or every time that you, you go out to uh, spend a night under the stars, is to just set yourself a target of learning a new constellation. Uh, 
But learning these asterisms, so to speak, such as the uh, Winter Triangle, not only are you learning three new constellations, if you didn't know those before, but you're also learning names of three stars that you probably didn't know. So as you can see, you're generating quite a lot of knowledge just by learning little things like asterisms. And that little bit of knowledge uh, will guide you. It's like a guidepost. Learning the constellations and asterisms is a guidepost because remember, as seasons move on, the stars also appear to move around the night sky. So when you first start this hobby, you may be familiar with, say, Orion being there, then you may get a couple of months of cloud um, cover. Next time you go out, Orion's now over here, you know, and you, it's really easy to lose your bearings. So get some knowledge of the night sky. And uh, this is also uh, especially useful if you travel to different locations. You know, you always know that Orion rises over there by those cluster of trees but that cluster of trees is no longer there once you move to a, a new location such as to a darker sky so just learning your way around is very very useful um, and even I can get lost in the night sky sometimes especially if there's a little bit of cloud cover because it's not always um, completely clear so some uh, constellations might be obscured and you can get easily get mistaken so the more knowledge you know, the easier it's going to be and uh, the overall experience is going to be a lot more enjoyable and less frustration. Um, it's just going to take a lot of frustration out in actually finding bigger and uh, better things in the night sky. So there you go, folks, the Winter Triangle. See, you learn something new every day in this hobby. <laughs> well, thank you so much for watching, folks, if you have watched this far. Don't forget to follow that link in the description to do yourselves a favor and get some quality astronomical gear. Um, in the meantime, folks, take good care of yourselves, and I will see you very soon. Bye for now.